and welcome to your 23rd iOS programming tutorial. And today I'm going to be showing you how to programmatically add a UI label to your view. Pretty much what this means is that rather than uh, adding a UI label to your app's screen by dragging it in from your objects library onto your storyboard or XIB file, we'll actually programmatically add this in code. So we'll actually type the code to create a UI label set the location of the label and the size of the label on the screen, and then set its text, and then we'll add it to the view. It's surprisingly simple and it has a number of advantages, which I'll talk about more throughout the video, but namely if you're working in a team of programmers, uh, it's less messy, I guess, and it's also much easier to change over time, and when there's major new iOS releases, such as iOS 7, all of your controls are upgraded much more naturally and smoothly compared to if you were using a storyboard or XIB. So, let's get started. Open up Xcode and we'll create a new project. Uh, just a single view application, and uh, it doesn't really matter. And I'll just call this UI label programmatically. You can call yours whatever you want. And again, organization name, company identifier, devices, that's all up to you. Another advantage of creating things programmatically is in terms of auto layout, it's much simpler because you could say, set your label to appear one third of the screen ac across on the x-axis, which is the across, and then a third of the way down, which is up and down, which is the y-axis. So you've got us to think of this as a plane or a graph. And I'll explain that once again in a moment in more detail. So we don't actually need a storyboard, but we'll keep that there. We won't delete the file for now. Um, I'm just going to keep it completely blank, but there'll still be a UI label on the screen. So we're going to create the UI label in our view did load method, and of course you might want to create the label when a button is pressed or uh, animated in on the when the view loads, and it's things like that that once again programmatically adding elements or objects to the screen can be useful for. All we need to do is type UI label, and we'll just call it label equals UI label alloc and in it. And we'll actually go in it with frame. And you'll see there's a CG rect bubble. Ignore that for now. Close the square bracket and add a semicolon. Now above that we need to create our CG rect, which is the location and the size of the UI label. Let me explain that in more detail by showing you what that would look like on a graph. Your screen or iOS device's screen is set out in a grid system. And so when you hear something like an iPhone 5 is uh, 1136 pixels portrait and then across it is 640 pixels that pretty much means up and down there's 1136 pixels so 1136 and across there are 640 on an iPhone 4 or 4s that's 960 up and down and f uh, 640 across and then non retina is similar um, however because of retina and non retina devices it works off a point system so pretty much relative to a non retina display so on a non-retina display, the iPhone 5 screen is actually 568 pixels tall, or on the y-axis it goes up 568, and it goes across uh, 320, and then that's just multiplied because of the number of pixels. So what we need to do is set the label's location on the screen, so we could set it 0, 0, which is the top left corner. So 0 on the y-axis, and as you get higher and higher, so 300 pixels down, that's actually down on the screen. It doesn't start in the bottom left, which is a common misconception. We also needed to set the size of the label. So we'll set the si we'll set the location, which is the top left corner of the label. And if we were to set that to zero zero, that would be the top left corner of the label would be in the top left corner of the screen. And then we can set the label's width and height. Now you can do this relative to the device's screen. So you could say set the label to be half of the set the x coordinate. So across where the top left on the across uh, plane, or horizontal plane, we could set that to be half of the screen width and half of the screen height, the Y. So then that would be right in the middle of the screen. So let's quick graph and let's go and create a CG rect. And creating a CG rect is very simple. So type CG rect, and we'll just call this label location equals CG rect make, and do the top one that has an X, a Y, a width, and a height. So the x coordinate is along that x axis, the horizontal or the crossways. Uh, where do you want it located? Where do you want the top left corner of the label located? So if we set that to be 100, that would be 100 pixels in from the left hand side of the screen, no matter whether it was in landscape or a portrait. 
And then we set the Y, which is the up and down. So if we had it 200, it would be 200 from the top left corner of the screen. Then the label's width and the label's height. Says CG float X, Y, and width and height, and that all sounds a bit complex, but really it's just a number. We don't really even need to convert it to a float. So let's say I type 100 for X, 100 for Y, and then I'll set the width to be 200 and the height to be 100. And I'll show you a better way of working out a better better way of working out a location in a moment. So now in our CG rect bubble, we can just set it to be this rectangle which we made just here, the rectangle with the position and the size of the rectangle. So the label will be located the top left corner. Of the label will be on 100, 100. So X and Y. It's always X followed by Y. And then it will be 200 pixels across, and it will be 100 pixels tall. So, inside the CG Rock Bubble, just type Label Location. Now, essentially, we've created our label, and all we really need to do is add it to our view. But let's set some properties of the label. And we set this the same as if we'd created the label on a storyboard. So, we'll start by doing label.text equals at talking mark, talking mark, semicolon. And here we can set the label's text, so I'll just type text. And then we can set label dot text color equals, and I'll just do a basic UI color. So open square brackets UI color red color. We don't even need to set that, and that's just to show you that you can. I'm not going to. I'm going to leave it by default as black. So that's really all we need to do. We could of course add a background color and just set that to be a clear color, because by default it might go to white depending on the iOS that you are running. So we can then type label dot background color equals open square brackets UI color clear color. Of course, as I said, that's optional. I'm going to delete it for now. So all we need to create the actual label is that code there. Then we need to just set it to show up on our screen. So we created the label. So now we need to type self dot view, which is the screen or the so let's say it was an iPhone, the iPhone screen. So the iPhone screen. Let's add a sub view. So currently self.view, that's the main view, or it might not necessarily be the main view, but in this case it is. So self.view is the whole, the whole of the iPhone screen, and we're going to add a sub-view, or a view inside that view, on top of the view. And that view is obviously going to be our UI label, and a UI label is a UI view, even though it says UI view. And, ah, uh, sorry, all we want there is label. So by default, that's going to go, okay, we'll add the label. Where does the label go? Well, the label goes inside its frame, and the frame is at 100 across, 100 down, and then it's this big here, so 200 pixels across and 100 pixels down. What will the label's text be? Well, that will be text. Let's run the application now and see if it's actually worked. So once the iOS simulator starts out, we should see a label on this location of this size with this text. So let's see. As you can see, there's our label. If we go into our storyboard, there's nothing there. We've created it entirely in code. It's that simple. We barely even need some of these lines. We could essentially take this code here, copy that and paste it there, and then completely get rid of this line here. If I run it now, you'll see the same. it looks exactly the same, it's just the code's a bit more compressed. And there's actually nothing wrong with that. It's pretty much just for explaining purposes and to make it more clear. Sometimes you might want to expand it all out. So I could have then here said UI label alloc in it and then done a semicolon right here. And then I could have set the frame later. Or of course I could have written the code to set up the frame and then set the frame here. Or I can literally create the frame inside of our labels uh, initialization method. There's no way of compacting it any further than that. But, oh, well, actually we could. We could even take all of this code here and paste that all there. But we won't do that. Now, that's all you need to create your UI label on a screen. So I'll now quickly show you how you could, say, center it on the screen by going half of the height and half of the width of the screen, or the view. Um, if you don't want to watch that, then you can tune out now. But that's a bit more if you want to watch it now. So let's go back to what we had before with the CG rec location up here, because that's a bit easier to work with. Now, we're going to replace the lo X location and Y location with the actual uh, size of our screen. So if our screen is 1000 pixels tall and we want it to be in the center, we want it to be at 500. So that's the size of the screen divided by 2. Now let's start with the x-axis. So here we type self.view.frame.size.width because that's the x-axis and then slash 2 divided by 2. 
to make it a bit uh, neater, I'm going to put that inside brackets. Now I'm just going to copy that code there and put that for the y-axis, but then I'm going to change width to be height. So now hopefully, let's see if it's worked, the label should be centered on the screen. As you can see, it's pretty close to being centered on the screen, and that's just a matter of pixels and auto layout and the, things like that. But that pretty much shows you how you can move the label around. That's also partially due to the fact that it's 200 pixels wide and 100 high, which it really doesn't need to be. Because technically, right here, if we go back to the simulator, that there, the top right, the top left corner, sorry, is in the center of the screen. It's just the label is not actually, or well, the label is, if that makes sense. We could move this around. We could go label dot origin uh, dot frame dot origin equals cg point make, and then we can put this code inside these bubbles here, and that might work a bit better. Let's try that and see if it does. I'll explain that all in a moment. Ah, oh, we need one more bracket. Okay. So that doesn't work, but you get the idea. So let me explain exactly what we're doing now that we've done it. We are creating a rectangle, which is the box in which the label will be housed, and then we're setting, we're creating a label, so we're giving it some memory, and then we're initializing it. We're initializing or creating it with its frame, and the frame is this box that we've created here. And then we're just setting its text, because otherwise there'd be nothing visible, there'd be no text. And then we're just adding that to our view. So our view or our screen, which is, uh, well, this is our screen here, this white screen. We're just adding a view on top of it, and that view is our label. So that's all there is to creating a label like that. You can do that with anything really. I can change UI label here to UI button and change this to UI button and uh, well property text it's actually title label dot text on a button. It's a bit different code for setting the text. And that's the same in a storyboard or programmatically adding it. But you'll see that it even works with the button and we can create a button on the screen just as easily as we did with the uh, with the label. And then buttons are a bit more complex, obviously, because you need to add a few more properties, such as what do you do when the button's clicked on, and so on. So I'll show you that in a later tutorial. For now, I hope you've enjoyed this video, and if you've got any questions, and I will be doing tutorials on how to add segmented controls, buttons, etc. programmatically, but if you have any questions about this specific tutorial, message us directly on YouTube, comment on this video, message us on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash 99 cents app development, or message us through our website, 99centsappdevelopment.com. Be sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.